The last lecture focused on an apparently simple question that turned out to be anything but simple. The question, are values culturally relative? In the course of that examination, three importantly different positions were distinguished. The first is descriptive relativism. Descriptive relativism is the claim that cultures differ in their fundamental beliefs about value. Ethical relativism is the claim that an action that is really right in one culture may really be wrong in another. It's not just a statement about beliefs. In unqualified or universal form, it's the claim that there are no universal moral truths. And prescriptive relativism, the third position we distinguished, claims that it's always wrong to condemn or pass judgment on those with different cultural values. In this lecture, I want to concentrate on just one of these, the question of descriptive relativism. Uh, this may seem to be the easiest form of relativism. Of course, values differ across cultures. Of course, beliefs, ethical beliefs differ across cultures. Of course, different cultures differ in their ethical beliefs. On reflection, however, it becomes clear that what we are interested in is fundamental ethical disagreement. The fact that two cultures announce apparently divergent values won't be of much interest if the differences turn out to be merely superficial. We don't want to be misled, for example, by apparent disputes that turn out to be nothing more than different cultural applications of what are essentially the same ethical values. It may look initially as if two cultures diverge on ethical values, when in fact their valuational deep structures are essentially identical. This is true, I think, even of some of the classical examples. There's a passage in Herodotus. It's retold in Montaigne. It's known as the experiment of Darius. Darius asked the Greeks how much he'd have to pay them to eat the bodies of their deceased fathers. And they react in horror. How hideous! He then asks the Colatians of India how much they'd have to be paid not to eat the bodies of their deceased fathers, cremating them in the Greek manner instead. They react in horror at the very idea of burning their dead rather than eating them. Now, despite the dramatic contrast, the experiment of Darius may not reflect a difference in genuine ethical beliefs at all. Suppose, for example, that the Colossians hold that it's right to honor the dead, that perpetuating their spiritual substance is a way of doing this, and that eating part of the bodies of the dead is a way of perpetuating their spiritual substance. Against that background, it's clear why they would think of eating their dead as a sign of deep respect, and it's clear why burning their dead would seem the deepest of insults. Now, if that's the cultural background, and in fact we have strong reason to think it is, then the different reactions that Darius records may reflect only differences in belief about spiritual substance and modes of perpetuation. The difference at issue may thus be more like factual disagreements than real disagreements regarding value. The value of honoring one's dead may be the same in the, same, in the two cultures. The disagreement is just a quasi-factual disagreement about what the spiritual universe is like and thus of how it's appropriate to honor one's dead. If the two cultures agree regarding the importance of honoring the dead, we have unanimity rather than divergence at the level of fundamental ethical values. I think that the primary examples that were offered last in the last lecture are like this too. Usury, were it to become widespread, would have threatened the economic breakdown of the entire seniorial system, the medieval economic system. The prohibitions against usury then were prohibitions against a radical threat to the entire economy. Our economy is different. In fact, our economy is founded on precisely the practice that was a threat to the seniorial system. But we certainly share this value. We certainly share the value that practices that would wreck the entire economy aren't to be taken lightly. So despite the fact that this looks like a case where something that's genuinely wrong in one culture is genuinely right in another, 
it may not reflect any deep difference in values. It may reflect merely a contextual difference in how the same values are displayed. The same reasoning applies to the Trobriand case. Both our culture and theirs holds that children should be cultivated and cared for. That doesn't differ. The system of care providing is what differs, in part perhaps because of different factual beliefs about how children come to be. What obligations I have as an uncle depends on the whole system of care provision. And once we understand that, it looks like the differences at issue are differences in care delivery systems, rather than any deep and fundamental disagreement as to basic values. So we don't want to be misled by these kinds of apparent differences that are not deep differences of ethical belief. If we're looking for the deep differences, we want to know, are there fundamental differences between cultures that can be explained only as fundamental differences in ethical belief? The two most notable attempts to answer that question have been by trained philosophers sent to do anthropological fieldwork. John Ladd and Richard Brandt, both important ethical thinkers in their own right. In trying to track down the question of descriptive relativism, John Ladd worked among the Navajo. Richard Brandt worked among the Hopi. The Hopi and Navajo are neighbors, not always happy neighbors, in the American Southwest. But they're very different cultures. Indeed, the languages of the Hopi and Navajo belong to two very different linguistic groups. The Hopi language is related to Nahuatl, the language of the Aztecs. The Navajo language is Athabascan, related to that of the Inuit, or Eskimo. So we've got two trained philosophers doing anthropological fieldwork. Both are trying to find out whether it's true that there are fundamental ethical differences, differences in fundamental ethical beliefs between cultures. So let's start with Richard Brandt and the Hopi. The traditional Hopi culture is very different from ours. They have four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, as we do. But for the Hopi, the traditional Hopi, each is deeply associated with color. West is always yellow. South is always blue. According to Hopi tradition, people are built with a series of vibratory centers along their backbone. A vibratory center at the soft spot at the top of your head, through which you communicate with the creator. The brain, just below it. A vibratory center in your throat. And the seat of the creator in your solar plexus. That's a very different view of anatomy. In the Hopi worldview, people were formed from clay and saliva by spider woman, and emerged with the help of the ant people through holes in the sky into a series of three worlds. Eventually, in this world, the fourth world, they crossed on a series of islands from the west into Central America. The traditional Hopi are quite adamant, for example, that they didn't come into the Americas across the Bering Strait. With a culture that different from ours, one might expect to find some very different views about people's obligations, very different views about right and wrong. The question is, are there any genuinely fundamental differences? Differences that aren't to be explained away in terms of differences in scientific or metaphysical worldview, like the experiment of Darius. Uh, differences that aren't to be understood merely as reflections of contextual differences in social arrangements like the different obligations of the Trobrianders. Brandt spent four years of sporadic fieldwork among the Hopi attempting to answer that question. And here are his conclusions. First of all, the Hopi do have a harsher disapproval of intoxication than is typical of contemporary America. But Brandt thinks that's easily accounted for by their historical circumstances. Alcoholism has been a major problem in the history of cultural interaction for almost all Native American peoples. Uh, the Hopi also have a much stronger disapproval of sexual relations between cousins of the same clan than we have of people who are biologically related in the same way. But Brandt thinks that that reflects differences in social arrangement rather than any fundamental difference in ethical beliefs. 
The clan structure creates patterns.